Ward on the ground. They're doing it really well. Another first down. Six points for Ward. A pitch out there. Good run for the Hurricanes. MB is going in the air for a bomb. Catch. The Wolverines, the 10, 5, touchdown Woodside. Back to another game at John B. Todd Stadium. We are here for the what is what is called to be the JV matchup of the year between <laughs> the Ward Raiders and the Phoebus Phantoms. So EJ, I want to ask you, how do you feel about this JV game? Well, I feel good. Both teams very evenly matched. Both teams undefeated right now. Warwick coming off a win against Hampton 21-0. Phoebus coming off a win against Minchville, 34-0. I feel like this is going to be a very intense game. So how you feel about the game? I feel good about this game. You know, both teams have been shutting out and blowing out opponents so far this season. And I just can't wait to see how this, how this game will match up. Where both teams, again, evenly matched in my opinion. Uh, last game of the season for Warwick, for JV. Uh, but for Phoebus, they have another game after this against Denby. And I wanted to ask you, who do you think is going to win this game? Um, this is going to be a good game. I can't, I can't tell you right now. We just have to see as this game progresses. Well, I understand that. As Phoebus kicks the ball off, and it's received by number eight, Terry's Brown, and he tries to cut it outside. Oh, he oh. gets a break. He oh, for three, but it's tackled by number. Looks like number twenty-six. Z Zaylen Johnson. Yeah, right there. That was a great return. They right when set the tone. A way to catch the ball, able to make a move real quick, and able to get all the way up to what it looks like to be the 44, 45 yard line. Yeah, you know, uh, this is a this, this is kind of a, what you see at a, a regular varsity game. You know, got the parents out, but you also got a band. The Warwick band is also outside. You can hear it. Uh, I don't know if you can, but you can hear their band. And you know, this this is a very hyped up game. Yeah, it's definitely a hyped-up game, especially just like the varsity game. Both teams very hyped up. Both teams coming in undefeated, both varsity and JV. So I can understand why the band came out to, uh, to play, especially after Warwick just took a loss varsity-wise against Phoebus. Yeah, you know, as number eight, uh, Terry's Brown cuts up the field, and he breaks off a tackle and gets a first down again about 13. Yep. You know, yes, uh, the Warwick Raiders varsity did lose to the Phoebus uh, varsity on Saturday. And these this Warwick JV team is looking to win and, um, and beat the Phoebus JV team. Well, Warwick JV for the past two to three years has been very strong. They've been playing at a very high-notch level. But Phoebus JV, again, there's a reason why Phoebus varsity has been playing at a high level as it is right now. They've been brewing athletes ever since the JV level, and this is where it starts right here. And they've been balling for the couple past uh, years. Yeah, you know, both teams uh, build up high caliber players for their uh, squad for the future. And this is this is a, a game between both high-powered teams, uh, JV-wise. As number 11 carries the ball outside, Oh, and it's tackled by a number eight for Phoebus, uh, Elijah Gregory. Yeah, right there. He tried to get the outside run, direct handoff to number 11, Gamir Thornton for uh, Warwick. Tried to get the outside, tried to maneuver the tackle. But again, nice tackle there by Elijah, number eight. Nice way to get the legs, attack his ankles, and nice way to get a tackle. Yeah, you know, uh, EJ, when I, I know you're a... Um you're a varsity player, but we, I know you played JV before, and I want to ask you, uh, well, I'm going to wait to add this snap, but I want to ask you about what's what's the transition like between JV and varsity, but I'm going to ask you after this snap. As number three, Dari Brown throws it, caught by number seven, Zaire White, and he's tackled. So, yeah, EJ, I want to ask you, what, what is the transition like going from JV to varsity? Well, number one, it's probably the biggest thing is the game is much faster and more skilled, I would say. Uh, a lot more technique is put in play, a lot more athletes. Because when you're in the JV level, it's just a bunch of kids come together as a group and, you know, learning to play as one and learning the ropes of varsity. That's why it's called junior varsity. So playing, as the, uh, playing at the JV level, 
it's very much a learning experience, and you can take with that on to the next level the order you get. Yeah, as we see, it was a illegal block in the back on the Ward Raiders, pushing them back to the 42-yard line. You know, this this Phoebus team, this Phoebus JV, JV is playing their 4-2-5, it looks like. And it looks like uh, the Warriors playing like a pistol diamond as they get the ball to number eight. And he's tackled by a gang of, J, a gang of JV Phantoms. Um, the first person to have contact there was number 28, Colin Haynes. And a, a group of uh, Phoebus Phantoms just crowded him and got to him. Well, right there, uh, in JV, they always teach you to rally to the football, always attack the ball carrier, all heads to the football. And right there, that was a nice tackle and nice teamwork right there by uh, Phoebus. Uh, Warwick loves to run, not just Warwick, but mainly most PD teams, uh, PD JV teams, they love to run the pistol, uh, pistol diamond offense, where it's a nice way to get the ball up the inside and the outside, uh, leading by the fullbacks and the running back. Yeah, it's number 10. Tyler Burley drops back, throws the ball to number four, Raquan Edlo, and is tackled by number 28. Uh, number 28, Colin Haynes. I feel like we're going to be calling Colin Haynes' name all night tonight because he looks like he's everywhere. Everywhere the ball goes, he's there. Yeah, he's been running that alley 24-7 this past game, I would say. Uh, the way he's coming down, attacking the ball carry, seeing the ball carry, and able to make nice clutch tackles has been the main reason why this offense has been very stagnant and it's fourth down right now. Yeah, you know, and he's really doing a, a great thing for this um, Phantoms defense, getting, getting a three and out stop, and it looks like number eight, Terrius Brown, is playing the ball, but it looks like there's a flag on the field. So, EJ, um, you, you, we... We talked about the um, the Ward versus Phoebus varsity game. I want to ask, what what did you think about that game? Well, again, uh, that game was also hyped up as they was calling it the game of the year, PD game of the year, uh, and things of that nature. And how I felt about the game coming, I thought it was going to be highly competitive, just like the last game. As the last game, uh, Phoebus came out with a last-minute victory against Warwick. But this year... Uh, both teams, well, Phoebus had a quick start, and they was, I want to say, up 14-7. to 7, But then Warwick was able to persevere and come back and take a 17-14 to 14 lead. But then Phoebus had a clutch touchdown and then a pick six at uh, the fourth quarter, which set the momentum drastically towards Phoebus' side, and that caused them to win the game. So, again, it's always a tough matchup between them two, both highly competitive teams. But... Uh, at the end, Phoebus was able to persevere at the end. Yeah, you know, we was actually uh, at that game, calling that game with uh, Greg and Nate last year between Warwick and Phoebus. Like you said, it was a high-impact game. More points were scored this time around than last year's game. As we see the Phoebus Phantoms under center, uh, number 12, uh, Mateo Radcliffe hands the ball off to number two, Number two, Rashawn Austin Parat, and is stopped by a group of Ward Raiders. Yeah, right there. Again, he tried to hand it uh, the ball up inside, try you know, set the momentum, set the tone for the offense. But nice way to rally to the football by the Ward Raiders, uh, JV. And also, again, since we're talking about uh, the varsity from last year, I did have fun calling that game, especially with you. It was a very, uh, very much a learning experience, especially how big that game was. I mean, the whole crowd was just filled up. Yeah, you know, that was a big game here at Todd Stadium. Um, as Mateo Radcliffe hands the ball off to Ray Sean Austin oh. Parrot, and he's stopped by number 19, Isaiah Emery. Oh, looks like it looks like it's another Isaiah Emery uh, here at uh, Ward Raiders. They got one of no, one number number 11, mm -hmm. Isaiah Emery, and they got a, um, a JV, Isaiah Emery. <laughs> Yeah, that, again, that was a, a nice hit, though, by uh, Isaiah right there, number 19. He was able to come down the alley, hit him, and not just him, but his teammates was able to rally to the football and finish up the tackle. Uh, very much well coached uh, by the Ward Raiders right there. Yeah, very well coached here as it's going to be third down. I be, yep, it's going to be third down, and Mateo Radcliffe drops back. Throws it, tries to get the ball. Oh, did he catch that? That might be caught. 
And I and it is caught by uh Rayshawn Austin Parrot. That's a a throw throw thrown right at his uh ankles there and he was able to make that catch. Yeah, honestly I feel like he dropped it. It looked like he dropped it uh just a tad bit, but the refs gonna give him uh credit of a doubt because it looked like he dropped it, but he was able to secure his hands to the point where it wasn't a drop. So that was nice hand eye coordination right there by uh number two. And the throw got to be a little bit more up there if I'm the quarterback. Yeah, you know, yeah, that was a uh, a very low, th very low throw as they hand the ball to Rashawn Austin Parrot, and he looks to be stopped for a gain of about two yards. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I feel like this JV is, you know, JV we see a lot of run run plays. Yeah. Um. So I just I feel like it, that's what we're going to see tonight. Not not too much passing in the air, but just run. They're gonna run the ball, get the ball to your best players, and run the run the heck out of the football. Yeah, when it comes to JV, the playbook is simplified to the players. So it's basically mainly what the playbook is for varsity. It's just dumbed down to more run plays, more just the fact that players have to execute their blocking assignments and execute the certain routes and certain plays. And it's like a beginner level playbook for the JV as the players are like, you know, coming into the, uh, the year. Yeah, as uh, Rayshon Austin Parrot carries the ball again for a gain of about three and is tackled by number 24, Supreme Pain. He he gets there for the tackle. As Phoebus Mateo Radcliffe, number 12, is getting ready for the next snap. They got a big fullback back there. Yeah, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if number 35 gets the ball. And he's oh they drops back throws it oh he throws it, it deep oh he caught and it's that caught by number number five Jaden Javier with a great catch yeah it looked like he got held right there also too a little bit uh he got tugged by the jersey in the shoulder but he was able to keep his eyes on the ball and maintain the catch that that was yeah, uh, amazing yeah. catch though. Yep, that Mateo Radcliffe threw a great ball there. He was able to throw the ball over uh, two defenders, and that's also a great adjustment by uh, Jaden Javier, readjusting his body and able to get that catch. Uh, they got the pass interference call. They got the pass interference call that they declined, and mm -hmm. it's uh, first and 10 for the Phoebus Phantoms on the 20 yard line. Yeah, so now we're in the red zone right here. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a run play, and they're going to keep running the ball, but it probably going to Catch them off guard with a quick little slant pass or just a quick little pass to catch them off guard as he just ran the ball right there. Yep. So as, number two. As number two, Rashawn Austin Parrot is tackled by number 24, Supreme Payne, for a gain of about three. That's a great run. We're going to see Rashawn uh, Austin Parrot carry the ball a lot this game. And I feel like, I feel like for JV, uh, JV just like varsity, just like college, just like the NFL, you, keep, you run the ball enough. You're, you're going to end up breaking a seam. It's going to end up breaking a tackle, break and find an open seam to score a, that score a touchdown. So I think that's what Phoebus is looking to do here: keep running the ball to Rayshon is able to get that uh, seam. And as Mateo Radcliffe fumbles the snap and falls back on it, and loses a loses a gain of about two. Yeah, right there. I feel like. Uh, when it comes to their play style and then their game plan for this game, I feel like it's just going to run behind their big offensive linemen. Since their offensive linemen is, like, huge. I mean, they like the same height and weight as you. And you, like, 6'3", 250. Like, I don't know. They just – they big for the for they, uh, age. They ninth grade, uh, ninth grade, 10th grade, 8th grade, and they tall like that. I feel like that's going to be their game plan. They're going to run behind that offensive lineman uh, and the fullbacks. And then that's going to bring down the safety in the corners to the point where they probably have an open pass play downfield. Yeah, you know, yep, they're going. That's, that's I feel like they're going to do it as Mateo Radcliffe drops back, throws the ball to Rashawn Austin Parrot, but just doesn't get there. Nice play on the ball by number fifty, Reese Press. Hey, yes, I feel like it's going to be a, a that's going to be a thing for both teams here. They're just going to give the ball. Get the ball to their running backs and run it behind their uh, big offensive lineman. You know, uh, Phoebus Phoebus lineman is is big, and you know you we see that for uh, varsity. You know, they they train their O lineman great. As Phoebus takes a timeout, you know, um, yeah, like I said, the Phoebus Phantoms they 
they they are able to coach they coach their uh, linemen. You know, I know they have great varsity linemen, just as uh, Wark has great varsity linemen. So both both teams do a great job of developing their talent, uh, their O line, their D line, quarterbacks, wide receiver, running backs. They do great. They do great, and that's why we see both teams uh, have the PD matchup of the year, as they both all as they always meet up as undefeated. Yeah, it's always a start to these teams, and it always starts through JV and how the coaching is and how players develop bonds with the coach and how that takes to the upper level of, of varsity and how they get more comfortable with the playbook, get more comfortable with the plays, and the coach trusting them more so where they open it up. And that's where these two teams got. That's what that's what these two teams got. Both, two, uh, both these two teams have uh, very high-skill-level coaches, that have brought them to this level JV is at right now and where varsity is at right now. Yeah. As Mattel Radcliffe looks to uh, take the snap, drops back to pass, throws it. Oh, tries to fit it in a tight window to Jaden Javier. And that pass is broken up by number 19, Isaiah Emery. Isaiah Emery, excuse me. As he, as he breaks it off. Yeah, nice way to collapse the wide receiver right there. The quarterback thought he had an open pocket where he could sling it in there, but nice way to uh, collapse on the wide receiver by the defenders, and nice way to force a, I want to say, turnover on down, actually. Yes, as it looks like the, yep, it be the uh, Warg offense back on the field, and this is Phoebe's defense looking to have another three and out. You know, uh, I say why to watch 28. If I'm the Warg offense, you have to watch 28 because 28 has been able to fly around the field and really make tackles. Yeah, most of that first possession defensively for Phoebus was mainly off 28, uh, Colin Haynes, him uh, collapsing and filling that alley, yeah. getting down there. As we see 28 again with the tackle on number four, Raekwon Etlo. Number 28, Colin Haynes makes the tackle. Yeah, he was uh, able to find the ball carrier. Not just him, number 52, Xavion uh, uh, Baltrip was able to get there and attack the lower body of uh, his body right there. So, again, nice way to uh, collapse the, uh, the ball carrier. As there's a flag for illegal block in the back on the War Raiders. That's the second time that's been called on the War Raiders. You gotta you gotta be you gotta uh, be able to stop the flags early on in this game. You know you would like to uh, slow off the slow off the flags. And also you would like to get no flags in this game. But uh, War has already started with two block in the back penalties. Yeah, War you have uh, has to stay disciplined in this game. You can't look at look like the game uh, we commentated from Friday, uh, Mitchville versus Denby, and where both teams were just having a, a whole penalty off, just flags everywhere, uh, almost every other down it felt like. So you got to stay disciplined, uh, especially in the JV level. You know, blocking in the back is tempting, especially for your your uh, teammate is running up the field and trying to make a play for themselves. Yeah, you know. It's just like, like you said, hopefully this game doesn't turn out like a Benchville versus Denby game where it's flags every time. And, you know, both teams, um, I know I know both teams use JV players for their roster. So this this is this is kind of a game where you see um, your, your JV players doing good and then you bring them back up uh, on varsity. As you get ready for the playoffs and you get ready for those backups and subs, you know you have those JV players who who's able to play hard and play physical right now, and these JV matchups just to get them ready to play on varsity on the Friday nights and the Saturday nights, especially as the playoffs come near. You know, you know playoffs start next week, so yeah. you have to be ready. You have to get your uh, players ready and get them uh, ready to be in these games uh, starting next week. In football, injuries happen, so obviously you need backups. You need a supporting cast behind the main cast, and that's where JV is. It also is to uh, prepare the players to the next level to play on Friday nights and uh, Saturday mornings, and they get ready for that time. Yeah, as it looks like number eight, Terrius Brown oh, runs. Oh, he breaks the oh. seam. And he's going to 40, the 30, the 20, the 10, 5, touchdown, Ward Raiders. Oh, that's a, a crazy play right there by number eight, Terrius Brown. He took it all the way 
to the end zone. Nice way to hype your crowd up, hype your team up. An amazing way to break off, especially you saw that little hurdle he did, the, uh, the break the, uh, the defender trying to get down low on him. It was able to break off for a touchdown. That was nice right there. I can't lie. That was nice. You know, he broke he broke off the first defender as he uh, as soon as he got the ball, he seen the defender in his face, was able to break, was able to shake him off and just run down the field. I think that was about an 85, 95 yard touchdown and Terrius Brown just scored. I think I think this game is going to be um, a battle between Terrius Brown versus Rayshon Austin Pitt Parrot and it looks like Terrius Brown takes the first shot uh, as he scores for the Ward Raiders. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a ground and pound game. Both running backs are going to have ex excellent games in my opinion. I feel like both of them are going to definitely have a lot of yards, possibly a lot of touchdowns. As you see, Terry Brown just had a touchdown. But I feel like if I'm Phoebus, you have to uh, swing your momentum back to y'all side. Because Ward, right now, as you see, the band is playing. The cheerleaders are going crazy. The uh the crowd is going crazy and momentum is all the way through Warwick's side. Yes, as the Phoebus Phantoms are getting ready to return the kick, you know this. And Warwick just drew first blood against his Phantoms uh team, and now we have to see how would the how is the Phoebus Phantoms going to respond. You know, are they going to keep throwing the ball with uh, Mateo Rat Radcliffe, or are they going to keep uh running the ball with Rayshon Austin Parrot? Or maybe they may break off with a kick return, as we'll see here as uh, Warwick is getting ready to kick the ball off. This is where playmakers got to step up for uh, both sides, both defensively for Warwick and uh, offensively for Phoebus. And this is where JV players, you know, this is where they got to step up to be varsity players and make a play and show out. It's number 64 for the... Uh, Warwick Raiders getting ready to kick off. It's Malachi Harris kicks the ball off to, oh, hits Jaden Javier. Uh, Javier looks to return to return it, and he's tackled by number 21, Kiete Kayet Peel, excuse me. He's, he's tackled. And a nice way to rally to the ball here right there by Phoebus. And not Phoebus, my bad, Warwick. And a nice way to pin them all the way uh, inside uh, their 10. Nice special teams play right there. Yeah, you know, but we've seen what the Warwick Raiders can do inside of uh, the 10 yard line for their offense. We're looking to see can the Phoebus Phantoms uh, respond to that touchdown and maybe break off for their own uh, TD run. As Mateo Radcliffe. Looks to take the snap. Hands the ball off to Rayshon Austin Parrot, and he carries the ball for a gain of about three. We see number two uh, for the Warwick Raiders, Omari Meredith. Uh, he, he he was there early on. Uh, he got, I guess they, they tried to hit him with a kickout block, but he was able to break off that block and get yeah. that tackle there. Yeah, right, uh, right there on that run play. Uh, I wanted to highlight number uh, 35. And the way he was able to hit the outside uh, contain guy, and the way he was able to hit him, and instantly it created a pancake, causing the running back to get extra yards right there. That's a, that's a nice way to run behind your fullback and just push for yards. Yeah, that's a good. That's that's what you teach. As number twenty four, Supreme Pain, the first to get there. You know they're doing a great job with uh, this. They're doing a, this. This war defense line is doing a great job getting uh, pressure. Uh, on this Phoebus Phantoms offense. Yeah, Warwick D-line has to, especially Warwick D-line has to stay low on this Phoebus O-line, especially how tall and how big they are. They're going to, their lateral quickness obviously isn't going to be as fast as the Warwick Raiders D-line, so they have to use that against them. They have to use that on when it comes to run blocking and their pass blocking is able to get off them blocks able to make a play in the backfield. Yeah, you know, this Ward D-line is doing a great job. You know, Supreme uh, Payne and also uh, Dylan Boone was able to get back there on that tackle as Mateo Radcliffe is in the shotgun. He takes the snap, drops back, throws it deep, looks for his 21. Oh, oh my gosh. What a catch by number 21. Isaiah Shaw 
Ogburn. That's a hard name to say. <laughs> but uh, Mattel Radcliffe just dropped back and just said, Why not let it fly? He's, yeah, he's just like, he said he's down there somewhere and just throws the ball in a perfectly, that's a perfectly placed ball yeah. as well between two people and was able to get that catch. Yeah, right there. Basically, the play was just go for a go route and I'll just find you. And that's exactly what the quarterback did. He dropped better pass, stayed calm. There was no pass rush in sight. So he just chucked it up. The wide receiver able to break off and have a lead, a speed lead in front of two defenders. Cause it was it was a safety in the corner right there and a nice pass by the quarter quarterback and just letting that fly and just great, great play right there. Oh my lord. Yeah, that's a great throw by Mateo Radcliffe. You know, he's he's the backup for uh, Marika's Banks, and it looks like he uh Marika's Banks the Phoebus varsity quarterback. It looks like um they they have a guy they have a guy behind Marika's that can uh throw that rock as we see there. Yeah, if he just spends a little bit more time uh developing more his footwork. And you know his process of the game. Hey, Fever's gonna look real good in the next what five years, four years. Yeah, you know, Doc like said uh, it's all about development, and uh, Fever's and Ward does a great job developing kids. You know, not saying for the other uh, teams in the Peninsula District that they don't do a great job, but these teams coming this game undefeated, and it looks like they do an awesome job. As it's a screenplay, Rashawn Austin Parat as he's tackled by number seven Zaire White. Yeah, that was a clutch play right there by Zaire. It would attack his legs and stop him from getting additional yards because if he broke off that tackle, he would have probably got a first down and a lot more because the linemen were just right in front of him. So, nice way to stop him for only a game and a five. And so now we got, what, second down to five now? Yes, we got second down to five. You know, that's a screen play. You got to, you know, um, if you get a free release, we uh, I know coaches tell their D-line, if you get a free release to the quarterback, watch for the screen. And you know, uh, that D-line didn't do a great job. Watch for the screen, was able to throw the ball. And if Zaire White didn't make that tackle, we may have seen Rayshon Austin Parrott uh, get a touchdown there. As Mateo Radcliffe drops back, throws the ball to Rashawn Austin Parrott as he it looks like uh, Zia Shaw thought the ball was going to him. Yeah. But number five for the Ward <laughs> Raiders, uh, Avion Rodriguez was able to was able to play both defenders and uh, stop uh, Rashawn Austin Parrott and Zia Shaw Ogburn from getting the uh, catch there. Yeah. What Phoebe tried to do, they tried to flip the play and run it to the opposite side. But the Ward Raider defense was able to analyze that and stop that from his tracks before he even caught the ball. As you saw, as soon as the ball even touched his hand, two defenders were right there to stop that. So, great play right there. Yeah, that was a great play by the Ward Raiders. You know, they're trying – that big play happened, uh, and they're trying to um, stop the Phoebus Phantoms from moving the ball. As Mattel Radcliffe is tackled by Omari Meredith – Mateo Radcliffe didn't see nobody and scrambles, but is tackled by uh, Omari Meredith. Yeah, he tried to step up in the pocket, didn't see nobody, so he tried to make a play with his legs. And a great tackle and great way to step up and tackle uh, the quarterback by number two, Omari uh, Meredith. Omari Meredith, my bad. <laughs> yep, Omari Meredith, as it looks like uh, I think the Phoebus punt team is coming out. Yeah, yes. Oh, there's another flag on the field. We'll look to see what that is. This Ward Raiders squad is playing great defense on this uh, Phoebus Phantoms team. And we, we as it looks like it's going to be a false start on the, oh, my fault, an illegal procedure call on the Phoebus Phantoms. And this Ward, this Ward Raiders team is playing great football against this uh, Phoebus Phantoms. Yeah, he, they come to play and try to get revenge for their brothers for uh, losing that game. And I want to say that Warwick has been really balling. And Phoebus, they haven't been they, – they they're not shooting themselves out the game. They could have capitalized off that big play they just had from their quarterback and wide receiver. But I feel like they get a, they get a stop right here on Warwick offense. I feel like they're still going to be fine. They're probably going they, to they – best chance scenario, they're probably going to have the ball around like three minutes, uh, four minutes to go. And that's definitely enough time for them to score, especially yes. with their big play ability. Yes, as there is another flag on the field, and it looks to be against the Phoebus Phantoms for false start. And now that's that's pushing that's pushing your um your punt back even further, you know. And now you're you're giving the this Ward Raiders squad um 
Great field position. Yeah, great field position. No matter how, no matter how he catches, no matter how they catch the ball there. Excuse me. So no matter how they catch the ball right there, you're you're putting the um, Ward Raiders in great field position to get uh, past the 50 yard line uh, after this return. Yeah, right here. This again always comes down to who's the more disciplined team. That's the end of it when it comes to football. Uh, them right there having back to back penalties is not good for this team, especially since they down and Warwick's big playability, uh, making plays and getting yards. Yeah, it looks like I was wrong there. They didn't the ball. They <laughs> didn't get the ball past the fifty, but it was uh, a great return. Well, not a great, uh, a good return by Zaire White as he was able to shake and bake uh, for a gain of about ten, and he was tackled by number eighty nine for the Phoenix Phantoms, Aaron Howard. Yeah, right there. That was really good by the punt team when it rallied to the ball carrier. And even though one defender missed, the other, uh, his teammates was able to pick up on his mistake and able to make that tackle. So we're they only at the 29 to 30. So they're not as bad. They're not as bad field position as we thought it was going to be. Yeah, you know, as we see, number 11 is that quarterback for the Warwick Raiders, Gamir Thornton. You know, they why I say watch out for a QB draw here, or maybe give the ball to Amari Meredith to uh, let him run the ball. As oh, you weren't lying. Oh, yep. As they tried to run a fake, uh, fake jet sweep, but he was uh thwarted in his um attempt by number 52, Xavier Ball Trip. He was able to get that tackle. Yeah, they were trying to run an outside, a fake outside run quarterback keep to the other side, but nice play right there by 52, able to have outside and tame, break the block shit, and nice way to bring the quarterback down with his yeah. two gloves. Yeah, you know, um, he was he wasn't faked out by the uh, jet sweep. Seeing a quarterback had the ball and was able to just uh, stop him in his tracks, stop him in his tracks to keep them from uh, advancing the ball. As we see, number three is in the shotgun now. That's Dari, the Hari uh, Moore, and I say watch Terius Brown again. You know, Terius Brown has been dangerous on the ground, so I say uh, don't let him break free. As Oh, as, as Warwick gets ready for the snap, and it looks like there's a delay of game penalty. Yeah, number eight has been a big, a big play playmaker so far this this game, especially by the first play actually, when he uh, had that kick return, and that took him all the way up to, I want to say past the 40 yard line, and then having that big rushing touchdown. Hey, watch him for watch uh for him to get the ball, but I feel like Phoebus is also expecting that, so they probably gonna rally down and really focus on him. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they faking and throw the ball here. As we see, number 10, Tyler Burley is now in the shotgun. So this may be their throwing quarterback that they have back here as he, oh, they throw the quick screen. Oh, oh! that's picked off by Jaden Javier for a pick six. He did a Jack Jones play right there. If you uh, if you know who Jack Jones is, he loves picking off balls like that. He had a pick like that uh, on Sunday against Joe Burrow. And uh, he had a pick like that also last year when the uh, Raiders blew out the Chargers like by like 60 plus. And right there, that was a great ball anticipation, great way to anticipate the play film right there also. Yes, and you know, we seen, as I said, I seen they, uh, I, I knew Tyler Burley, number 10, would be their passing quarterback. And soon as he dropped back the pass, um, uh, Jaden Javier just read the screen and just picked it off for a pick six. Yeah, great anticipation right there by him. And that also shifted the momentum now towards Phoebe's side and also gives Warwick the ball back with three minutes and 48 seconds to go. Yeah, as there's a timeout for the Phoebus Phantoms, looks like the Phoebus Phantoms are looking to go for two. You know, I, I wouldn't be so, – uh, they may begin their um, kicking team out here. Yeah, they're getting their kicking team out here as they are getting ready to uh, – looks like they're getting ready to get the extra point. Yeah, they try to – I don't know if they're as confident as they kicker because if they were, they would have had them out in the first time. But if they are going for two – I feel like I wouldn't be surprised if they do like either a, if they pass the ball, it's probably gonna be a quick slant up the middle, attacking the middle of the field, or an outside run play to get uh, Rayshon uh, the ball. Rayshon Austin Perret the ball. Yeah, you know, uh, the Phoebus Phantoms looks like they try to uh, be up by one, uh, be up by two actually, 
it looks like the Phoenix fans are lined up for the extra point and trying to get this uh, game, trying to move this game to a one point game. As Phoebus gets ready to kick the extra point here. Number 30 is getting ready for the kick. And that's. Oh, it is oh, blocked, blocked by the Ward Raiders. Yeah, right there. That was poor blocking by Phoebus right there. Uh, special teams blocking right there. Could have had a chance to be up by one. But. You're going to have to live with that mistake for the rest of the game. That could also be a game changer, especially uh, if they either win or lose by one point. That would be the difference maker right there. Yeah, as this game is tied 6-6 six to six in the second quarter with three minutes and 48 seconds left in the game. As, though, as we look to see this uh, War Raiders kick return team is ready to... Uh, Ready to get to receive the ball here. No, the Phoebus Phantoms team is getting. Phoebus Phantoms is uh, fresh off of the pick six, and this War Raiders team. You know, they threw the pick six the last drive. Now we have to see: Are they going to keep running the ball with number eight Terry's Brown, or they're going to try to throw the ball again, maybe? And we'll see uh, once the. War Raiders get the ball. Yeah, that's, it, I'm pretty sure after that pick, they're going to definitely just gonna keep on running the ball under that pistol diamond formation. Especially how it's, it worked the last time it got on the touchdown. I, I see. I don't understand why you're running away from it. As Zaire White takes the return and it's tackled by two Phoebus Phantoms by number nine, Zachary Edmond, and number 19, Kendall Whitehead. They both were, they both was there to make the tackle on Zaire White. You know, like like I said, I said earlier, you know, um, JV players are 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 used for um, varsity games, you know, as backups, and may, and some of them, maybe some of them even start mm -hmm. uh, on varsity teams. As Zaire White is an example of a JV player playing varsity, as he's number twenty eight on the, on the varsity squad, and he he's playing JV, so he's being one of those transitional players that can play both uh, JV and varsity, and does has a great impact for the Ward Raiders. As Dari Moore uh, pitches the ball to number eight, Terrius Brown. Terry's Brown chase one. Look, chase another oh. one. Oh, hold on, hold he on. may be going again. Terry is Brown. There's a hold flag on. on the field as he hold scores on. again. Hold on. But that may be getting called back. That may be getting called back. I see the flag oh. on the field, but that's that's another great run by Terry is Brown. He's been able to do it all for <laughs> um this Ward Raiders offense, he, he's unstoppable right now. Do you see that, that quick pitch as there will be a, a oh. holding penalty against the Ward Raiders that brings back that epic run? Yeah, right. That run right there was like Madden esque. The way he was able, <laughs> the way he was able to get to the outside, make one cut, and then flip to the other side. That was Reggie Bush esque right there. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. Yes, but terrible uh, execution right there by the lineman uh, holding. And calling that big play back, that would have changed the momentum by a lot. Yes, yes, it would have. You know, uh, Terrence Brown is uh, one of their key players uh, right now for the Ward Raiders, and he he's he's been unstoppable right yeah. now for the Ward Raiders. And I think I think from the Ward Raiders, you go back to number eight, you get you feed him the ball until the Phoebus Phantoms are able to stop him. Yeah, you was just talking about before the play how. Uh, JV players can make an impact on varsity right away. And right there, that's the impact type play that I feel like he could have that impact on varsity. And I feel like he is probably making an impact on varsity right now. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see Terry's Brown on uh, this Phoebus, uh, this Ward team, excuse me, this Ward Raiders team in the playoffs as they either play in Mitchville or Bethel. Um, in the playoffs next week, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised. You know, uh, he's he's been able to do a great job uh, for this Ward Raiders team right now. Yeah, especially the way he was able to keep his stamina up after all them jukes and cuts to the other side of the field. Man, I'll be gassed by like what forty. I'll be gassed by then. 
Yeah, you know, that's that's an, that's also that's also just off season conditioning there, you know, and also in season. You know, I know some teams still keep their uh, players in tip top shape during the season, you know, with workouts and conditioning. So that's all that's just in season um in season conditioning and off season uh conditioning. Uh, that shows why it's important to go to off-season conditioning or having off-season conditioning and in-season conditioning for players as it keeps them maintained throughout the whole season. Yes, that's Dahari Moore, number three. Pairs for it. Give the ball to number four, Raekwon Etlo. He stiffs on the guy, but number 10 uh, is able to make the tackle for the uh, Phoebus Phantoms. That's uh, Julian Javier, you know. And he makes a great tackle, you know. I I I, I think I know their father. What? Yeah, I, think, <laughs> I think I know. I think I know their dad. Um, I went to their dad was my um. Their dad was my uh, PE teacher, and you know it just goes to show how oh uh, you how the how the generation grows up. You know, I end up. Being, I was their dad's uh, <laughs> student, and now I get to see his sons play uh, right now. As Terrence Brown, he breaks, he's breaking off tackles, oh. and they can't bring him down. He's he's unfortunately stopped, and they ruled the play dead. But they cannot bring down Terrence Brown. Yeah, right there. Oh, let's go back to the, what you was talking about. How uh, I think you know his dad. <laughs> it's random, but like you know, it shows how small of a world this really yeah, is. Yeah, it is. A but, small world. Back on that, uh, back on that play, uh, the way the Phoebus Phantoms were trying to rally to the ball carrier, and they really did an excellent job on that. But Terrius Brown, he couldn't go down on that, uh, even though the play was dead already, and they lost yards. But that showed uh, a lot of heart and determination by him. Yes, it did. You know, Terrius Brown looking kind of uh, like Derrick Henry, <laughs> looking like oh, Derrick Henry couldn't couldn't take him down. You know. And it, it took for the refs to call the play dead for uh this, that play to stop, but that's all. But we're looking like Terry's Brown is looking like the key player for this uh War Raiders offense. As you give them the ball, give him the ball, and he's gonna give you his full effort, 110. percent yeah. yeah, it looks like they're running their offense through him. Uh, the run game wise through him, able to get to the outside and trying to run it up the guards and tackles and try and let him make a play for himself. Yeah, you know, he can run in between the tackles, outside the tackles. It don't matter. He's going to he's going to uh fight hard, you know. Derrick Henry esque. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, this this is going to be like I said, I said before I said during the, uh, early in the game, this is going to be a battle of the running backs. Mm -hmm. You know, uh Rayshon Austin Parrot, he's he's fighting his hardest. Uh, for the Phoebus Phantoms trying to fight for every yard. And we have Terrence Brown also fighting his hardest for every yard. So, like I said, this is going to be a running back game. It's going to be a, a battle between Terrence Brown versus Rayshon Austin Parrott. It's just about which which running back is going to capitalize and uh, win the game for their team. As we see, Dahari Moore uh, is looking for the uh, snap here. As it takes snap, oh, it pitches back there. Oh, Tyler Burley breaks off his breaks off sex, and he's eventually brought down by number 65, Cameron Beckner. Yeah, they tried to do a trick play right there, which in my opinion, I don't think that was very, I don't think that's the smartest decision they could have did right here, but they tried to catch him off guard with a hat back toss pass. But nice way to read the play by the Phoebus Phantoms defense and in a nice tackle. And clean up by number 65 of Phoebus, uh, Kamari Beckner. Uh, great play right there. Yeah, you know, yes, they did try to do a um, a trick play, try to do a double pat, like a, a fl flick it back and let um, number 10 Tyler Burry throw the ball. But that's just an excellent way for a number 65 uh, Cameron Beckner to get back there for the sack. You know, if that Phoebus Phantom gave him pressure. Uh, oh, they run a fake punt to Terrius Brown. And Terrius Brown, oh, hurdles a man. Oh, my and gets God. the first down oh my God. for the Ward Raiders. He balling right now. Like, they try to do a fake punt, uh, make him keep, keep the ball. And he had all the open space in the world. He was playing punt. And he was able to make a play with his feet. A little hurdle right there. And, again, great play by him. Yes, an excellent play by him. 
He's doing it all for this Ward Raiders office right now. Just feed him the ball. <laughs> feed him the ball. Yeah. That's all you got to do is feed him the ball. And he's doing a great job with the ball. Where it seems like that's they play. That's the uh, that's they play style right now. Just feed him the ball, make him make a play for himself. And again, that was again a great play by him. I can't over exaggerate that enough. As it's only ten seconds left in the second quarter. Yes, as number ten Tyler Burley is getting ready for the snap. Drops back to pass, looks, throws it. Oh, oh it almost picked off again by the Phoebus Phantoms. That's number 20. Um Isaiah Frederick breaking off the uh breaking off the pass. Yeah, great anticipation and great use of the eyes and playing the receiver by number uh by number 20. And great way to get a deflection as there's only four seconds left on the clock. So if I'm worried, what do you what do you think should be the uh I, I feel like I already know what you're gonna yeah, say. Give the ball to number eight. <laughs> number eight. <laughs> give the ball to number eight and let him try to uh score a touchdown here, you know. But uh, the Ward Raiders may be trying to uh just throw a Hail Mary, but I don't I don't see a Hail Mary working. Or they may be trying to do a hook and ladder play as catch the ball, just flick it back and try to get something. But I say run the ball to number eight. Yeah. Uh, as they throw it deep, oh, oh he, slipped, though. he, he slips, slipped. but he tackled by number 10, and that's Julian Javier with the tackle as we as we head off to halftime. Now, right there, it's a good catch right there by number I want to say number nine, but great way to tackle him inbounds and send this to half as a 6 6. As both is a tie game, Warwick and Phoebus, and we'll catch you after halftime. So I'm Edgar Jones. I'm Bishop Dunn. And we'll see you after halftime. Whoa, man, you just hit my car. Chill out, man. I didn't even hit your car. I'll show you chill out. That was a bit of an overreaction. In order to manage your anger better and make sure events like this don't happen to you, here are a few small pieces of advice that you can follow. Think before acting. Take deep breaths. By following just these two pieces of advice, we can all start to live much healthier, happier lives. Welcome back to John B. Todd Stadium as we get ready for the second half of this great JV matchup between the Phoebus Phantoms and the Ward Raiders. EJ, we seen in the first half that the uh, Ward Raiders put up the first touchdown of the game as number eight Terry's Brown took the uh, took the ball 85 yards down the field for a touchdown, and we seen Phoebus uh, counter that with a pick six mm -hmm. uh, by number five Jaden Javier. So. Hey, coming out of coming out of um, this halftime break, who is the impact players for both teams so far in this game? Well, for Warwick, obviously it gotta be uh, as me and you was talking about, uh, Tyrius Brown, number eight. He's been balling, especially uh, even before halftime. He was he was he did that fake punt, and that got him the first down right there, and also gave Warwick their their first and uh, only score so far with that 80 plus yard touchdown, and for Phoebus. I say offensively is Rayshon Austin Perrett as he's been carrying the ball downfield, even though their offense has been kind of stagnant as of recent. He's been carrying the ball downfield. And also uh, defensively for Phoebus, number 28, Colin Haynes, coming down to, uh, the alleys, able to make clutch tackles, and that's been keeping him in the game. Also, for the pick six, I want to say, who was that, number 18? Number five. Number five, my fault. Number five, uh, Jay and Javier. Uh, able to get that pick six, that was very clutch for them, and that got them they score. 
Yeah, you know, I agree with you. Uh, number eight, Terrence Brown, is definitely an uh, impact player in this game. I also think number 19, uh, Isaiah Emery, he's also a big impact player on that defense uh, side. As as you said already, number two, Rayshon Austin Parrott is a big key for Phoebus offense. And uh, number 28, Colin Haynes, is also uh, a great a great impact player for that defense uh, side of the Phoebus Phantoms. As as we wait for the snap, yeah. uh, this, uh, to start off this second half, we get ready as Mateo Radcliffe is under center. Looks like as he gives the ball to Rayshon Austin Parrot, he breaks free for a gain of about eight on that play. That like that's uh, I say the all first half. This is going to be a running back game, mm -hmm. and Rayshon Austin Parrot, he's trying to. Um, Started off in this second half. He's trying to get him. He's trying to get his big game touchdown. Yeah. Uh, here with that run. Yeah, he's trying to uh, have some haymakers back as Terry is Brown. Uh, try had his haymakers uh in the first half with the touchdown and the fake punt. So now Rayshon Austin Perrette, he trying to have his groove on and trying to take this Phoebus team to another score. Yes, as they give the ball to number thirty-five. Uh, Isaiah Blackwell. They try to they try to give him the ball, turn around a little fullback dive. Uh try to get that first down. It looks like uh is he gonna give it to him for the first and it, it is gonna give it to him for the first down. Uh that's a great that's a great call by the Phoenix Phantoms. Get the ball to your big guy, your big fullback, number thirty five, Isaiah Blackwell, and he was able to get that first down. Yeah, he tried to catch him off guard with the fullback dive, and it worked. Not by a lot, but it worked to the point where it got them the first down. So, nice play call. Yeah, as Mateo Radcliffe <clears throat> uh, is in the shotgun, he drops back, throws the ball to Rashawn Austin Perrott. He juggles it. Oh, breaks off. Oh. And he's, oh, he's tackled for the first down. We see him, he, he almost dropped that pass, but was able to regain it and get a um a great second effort uh push for that first down. Yeah, nice way to uh rally in the football. And also he broke two defenders right there, broke two tackles by the defenders. At the same time, Ashidenti type break tackle. And great way to get that first down by Rayshon. Yeah, you know, he he did a um a spin move to break off the tackle. Uh as he was brought down by number six, Kumari Humphrey for the uh War Graders. But yeah, you know, he he broke off he broke off those tackles. That's that's something uh if you're the Phoebus Phantoms, that's something you uh you take for your next play. Like you see Rayshawn Rashawn Austin Parrot, he's looking to um do whatever it takes to get his Phoebus Phantoms another touchdown. So you may see another handoff to him or give him getting the ball again, uh, to get a, a first down here, or maybe even break off for a touchdown. As Mateo Radcliffe's in the shotgun, it looks they throw the ball to number five, Jaden Javier's over his head and almost uh, in number 11's hand, Gamir Thornton. That that ball almost tipped off for Jaden Javier and um into number 11, Gamir Thornton's hands. Yeah, Fevers right now is trying to emphasize on the ground game, giving the ball to Rush, uh, Rayshon Austin Perrette, number two. But right there, they try to catch him off guard with a quick little drop back pass to the out route, and the ball is a little bit too high. To be catchable and in a uh, corner for number, I mean for uh, for we could have had a chance to pick that off and be a game changer play right there. Yeah, if he was able to pick that ball off, he would have took that for six. As he get the ball to Rashawn Austin Parrot, as you hear the crowd, they look. It looks like they seen a uh, false start, but he's tackled by two people. Uh, number twenty four, Supreme Pain, and number seven, Zaire White. You know, Supreme Pain is also an impact player for this uh, Ward defense. As we've been talking about him mostly all that first half, and it looks like he's still, he's getting back there for the Ward Raiders uh, here in this uh, third quarter. Yeah, war, uh, for Ward, uh, uh, Supreme has been the defensive player for them. For this game so far, able to do the same things Colin Hayes has been doing for Phoebus by filling in the alleys, making the clutch tackles in the backfield, and able to, you know, get them rally down for a loss. Yeah, as Mateo Radcliffe drops back. Oh, broken up by number five, Avion Rodriguez. Um, he 
he was able to get his arm around uh, as the ball was attended for Rashawn Austin Parrot. They're trying to involve Rashawn Austin Parrot in everything this Phoebe's Phantom office is doing here. And looks like the Warwick Raiders are keying in on him. And that's a great defensive play by number five, Avion Rodriguez. Yeah, nice way to play ball and play the receiver also by able to swat the ball away. And a great way to force a fourth down right here for Ward. Yes. Yes, as we see, uh, 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 Ward is getting ready to field the uh, ball as number 30, Jaden Williams, is getting ready to punt. Uh, number seven, Zaire White, and number four, um, Raquan Etlo, is both back there for the Ward Raiders. Oh, looks like a bad punt here. Yeah. And, oh, looks like, could they return it? Oh, oh, they will oh. return it. Number 11, Demir Thornton takes the ball into the end zone for a punt return. Yeah, right there. That was a terrible punt right there by uh, number 30, Jaden Williams. And nice ball awareness by number 11 for Warwick. I want to say that's uh, Demir Thornton. Great ball awareness, great field awareness, and able to score right there. But they is saying there's a flag right now. <laughs> yes, it looks like there will be a flag. But yes, that was a that was great awareness. Um, that was a bad punt uh, by Jaden Williams, and it looks like uh, number fifty was the first to uh, box out. That was Reese Press. Number number fifty got there first as they wave off the flag for a touchdown. Number fifty got there first. Uh, he hit Jaden Williams to stop him to prevent him from fielding the ball. And number 11, Gamir Thor Thornton, just seeing there was nobody around him, picked the ball up and take it for the uh, touchdown. Yeah, everybody was confused on what was going on, where the, where the ball was up in the air. And number 11 had his eyes out and open, ready for the ball to come to him, and able to out -mus also out-muscle the kicker from tackling him and scoring all the way for a touchdown. Great ball awareness, great field awareness right there by number 11. Yes, as it looks like Ward is going for the two-point conversion here. You know, this may be a little risky, but I feel like if I'm the Ward Raiders, you run the ball behind uh, Terrius Brown, number eight, and see what he can do and see if he can push that ball into the end zone. Yeah, right there. I don't think Warwick is comfortable with their special team. I mean, their uh, field goal team. Especially after the last time I got blocked and it came up short. So I feel like now they got to take risk and go for two. It says number three as they get the ball to Terrence Brown. And, oh, he's stopped by the Phoebe Sanders. The first one to get there is number 52. And that would be Xavion Black ball trip. You know, uh, Ward tried to give the ball to number eight, Terrence Brown, and try to give him the ball to push the, push the game to a uh, – What's the name? A 15-point a game. They try to, uh, my fault, not 15, an eight-point game. Excuse me. I'm, <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but, yeah, they try to push the game to an uh, eight-point game. But uh, number 52, Xavier Baltrip was just able to get that stop there, you know. Yeah, so if I'm Phoebus right now, you have to have a score right here if you want a chance to get back in this game. You have to, it doesn't even got to be a, a touchdown. It can be a field goal if you trust your special team, uh, field goal team enough. But it mainly has to be a touchdown. Half the ground pound that ball. Emphasize it. Don't get away from the run game as it's been pretty consistent over the past two quarters. And you got to stay stick with it. Yes, you know, uh, we, I know for if I'm the Phoebus Phantoms, you try to get a ball to number two, Rashawn Austin Parrott. You know, they've been doing that all game, and I don't see them stopping. Uh, they're trying to get Mateo Radcliffe arm a try also as well as he's uh, trying to air the ball out to his receivers, Jaden Javier and uh, Zia Shaw Auburn. As number five, Jaden Javier takes it, he jukes, breaks off tackles, and is stopped at the 32-yard line um, by by a group of Warwick Raiders. Yeah, nice, uh, great tackling right there by Warwick, able to bring him down and rally all hats to the football by Warwick right there. And for Phoebus, nice way to get good field position by the kick returner. Uh, I want to say number five, right? Yeah, number five, Jaden Javier, you know, uh, he was able to get a great return. And as you see, this Phoebus Phantoms offense is getting back 
uh, on the field. You know, you don't want to go three and out here. You know, uh, J this is a JV game. You know, you don't have those twelve minute quarters. You have those ten minute quarters that uh, mm -hmm. go by very fast. So you want to keep the ball and want to get a touchdown as fast as you can. Or, or try to take the uh, time out the clock and just uh, score. As we see, they get the ball to Rashawn Austin Parrot, and he's stopped by number four, Raekwon Edlin. Yeah, great way to run up the middle, gain some extra yards, and that's pretty much going to be their play style for most of this possession. It has to be running up the middle, run through their fullbacks and their big linemen as they have a size advantage in that and nice way to attack up the middle in the A gaps and the B gaps. Yes, you know, uh, you, if I, you know, Phoebus, the Phoebus Phantoms can waste out this quarter and waste out the fourth quarter to give their uh, team the, uh, the score here to at least try to attempt to get the score here and give Warwick uh, not enough time as they run the ball again with Rashawn Austin Parrott. And it looks like they're trying to waste out the quarter. They're trying to keep the ball on the ground, get these two three-yard runs. Um, as it looks like this may, as it looks like it's a first down. Yeah. Yes, they're trying to get these two, they're trying to get these four, three, two yard runs here, and trying to push the ball down the field by by using this run game. You know, trying to waste out the clock, trying not to give this Ward team a, uh, not trying to give this Ward team another uh, uh, as much time to push the ball down the field. Yeah, Phoebus in the first two quarters, they when it comes to running the ball, they had the quarterback under center and handing the ball off to the running back, following the fullback having a lead out block. Now what they're doing now is they're having two guards pull and probably getting some extra yards through there. But oh my God, yeah, nice sack nice. right there. Nice sack by number fifty one. And that would be Gary Powell with the sack. You know, I you have to you have to keep running the ball here, Rashawn Austin Parrot. You know, uh, as, it, as is there a as a flag looks like on the field, and it's at the forty yard line. But yes, I, you got to keep running the ball here as it's a holding penalty on the Phoebus Phantoms, and that play was declined. But yes, you had I would have if I'm the Phoebus Phantoms, you keep running the ball with. Uh, Rashawn Austin Parrot, you know, you, the, the passing game hasn't been there for the Phoebus Phantoms. You know, they, they had that one big pass but, uh, to Zia Shaw Ogburn, but, you know, you got to keep the ball on the ground. You know, if you're going to pass the ball, go for the, uh, the stops and the slants or the drags to try to at least build up to that big uh, throw. As Mateo Radcliffe draws back, he looks for another screen and he breaks off for Terry's, uh Brown and he trucks over another defender. As he gets a gain of about 10 yards. Yeah, on that last play, the, the play caller, uh, the officer play caller got a little bit too greedy uh, after the first down. And they try to switch it up. And great way to sack the quarterback by number 51 for Warwick. Uh, I want to say that's uh, Gary Powell. But then on that play, they try to catch him off guard again. Try to get some additional yards with the screen. Nice way to get some additional yards, though, too, by number two. And now it sets up a third down, and I want to say 14. Yes, you know, uh, that was a great call on the screen. Uh, great call. Uh, you, he, break, he broke off the first tackle. That's what you want your running backs to do. Break off, make the first man miss, and push for extra yards. He made uh, number eight, Terrence Brown, miss, uh, and was able to make a few other reward players miss but before he was eventually brought down. And so... The Phoebus Phantoms are on this is about it's third and fourteen. You have to think, would they run another screenplay or would they throw the ball here? So EJ, I wanna ask you if you are if you are the head coach uh for this Phoebus Phantom squad, it's third and fourteen, uh with four minutes left in the third quarter. What play are you calling? Well, last time uh when we saw Phoebus run a all goes, it came out successful. The quarterback put it on the dime, put it on the money, and had a perfect throw for the wide receiver downfield. So I feel like, why not do it again? Why not let the quarterback let it fly again? And let's see if, uh, as you see, they're in empty formation. So that's most likely what's going to happen. Yeah, as Mateo Radcliffe drops back, he uh, looks he looks like he's going to scramble and it's stopped. Uh, will not gain a first down, will not even gain a yard here. At, well, he gained a few yards here, excuse me. Mateo Radcliffe for the gain out of about two, uh, two, three yards, and this would be, and this would be a fourth down, and the Phoebus Phantoms are playing again. 
He didn't like what he saw downfield with the goal routes. So he tried to take it with his legs, see if the the cornerbacks were going to collapse down and watch him run. But they stayed disciplined, and the linebackers pushed him out of bounds. So great defense right there by Warwick as they're going to touch the ball again in this third quarter. Yeah, so it's Jaden Williams is getting set to punt the ball. But I think if I'm the field, I think uh, Mateo Radcliffe should have threw the ball there because, you know, like it's a JV game, and, you know, the, the time moves fast, so you never know when you might get the ball again. As it looks like should, there's a flag on the field. And, uh, oh, oh, they're going to return it again. Number six, Kamari um, Humphrey gets out of bounds. You know, they're able, they're taking advantage of these punts by the Phoebus Phantoms. Yeah, Phoebus not being aware of where the ball is leading to, and Warwick is taking advantage of that using their ball awareness and their field awareness against them and being able to gain additional yards. And now that puts them past midfield with three minutes and 40 seconds to go, but it's going to be a flag, though. And. I want to say that is on it's on Phoebus for a legal receiver. So I think they're going to go out for a re-kick possibly. A uh, legal procedure. My apologies. So yeah, it looks like the the Ward Raiders are going to it's like they're going to uh, they're going to mark off the 5 yard infraction and the Ward Raiders are set up for first and 10 on the Phoebus 37 and we see who's in that backfield. Number eight, Terry Brown. He's been a key player for this Ward Raiders offense. And we have to see, are they going to give him the ball here on this play? As in a pitch to the right, uh, Terry Brown breaks off. Oh, it looks like he's stopped by a game, a game of Phoebus Phantoms. Uh, and he's tackled in the backfield. Yeah, As, right there, they was able to, my bad, if I cut you, you off. Go, no, you're good. But nice uh, defense there by Phoebus, able to load the box, anticipating the run play by Warwick, and great way to bring him down as a team. Yes, that's a great game tackle. That's what you have to do on uh, number eight, Terry Brown here, you know. Uh, he, we've seen in the first half, if it's, if it's one-on-one in the open field, he, he wins those typical uh, one-on-ones. And uh, looks like here, uh, the field, a Phoebus Phantom got there, wrapped him up, and then his whole team uh, gang tackled and got him down. You know, that's something we see also on varsity for the Phoebus Phantoms. They get their hats to the ball. As number three, Dahari Moore uh, pitches the ball to number eight, uh, number four, excuse me, Raquan Edlo, and he's tackled uh, by number seven, uh, uh, Javion Early. He's tackled by number seven. And now this, this Phoebus Phantom defense is waking up. Yeah. They're uh, reading the plays quickly and analyzing it and flying to the football. They try to run that toss play again to the other side, but Phoebus wasn't having it. Stopped them for a no gain, and now this is a third down. Yes, it's a third down. We have to see what this uh, work offense this work offense is prepared to do here. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised with a throw here as we see Tyler Burley is in a uh, backfield quarterback. You know, he's there throwing quarterback. So I wouldn't be surprised as he drops back and throws the ball and over the, right through the hands of number thirteen Zachary McMorris Webb. You know, I if you have those are the type of plays you have to catch. Yeah, especially that on third down. And I wouldn't say that was solely against the receiver. That ball could have been a little bit lower as it was a little bit too high for him. But, again, if, uh, as Jerry Rice said, if the ball touches your hands, you have to maintain it. You have to catch it. And that's now it's like fourth down in 10 for Warwick. And it looks like they're going to punt the football. Yes, but uh, I, if I'm the Phoebus Phantoms, you have to watch out for that fake punt here. You know, as it was executed perfectly the last time they ran it. So you have to watch out here. As Terry Brown is in the back for the punt. Oh, he runs it. Brown is, oh, it reverses field. What, incarnation? He may, he oh. may get it here. Uh-oh. Terry is, oh, he's tackled down. It looks like there's a flag down at the 40, but Terry Brown is tackled by, uh, looks like I, I see number uh, 10, Julian Javier there uh, for the tackle. And is there a flag on the field? Yeah, they tried to, well, Terry uh, Brown tried to reverse the fields again, 
but Phoebus was right there quicker and more prepared for the fake punt as he tried to reverse fields, read it quickly, and brought him down before he even reached the first. So great way to anticipate it. But we have an injury timeout now by the officials, number 19 for Phoebus. Yes. Kendall Whitehead is down. Yes, you know, uh, as you said, Terry Brown tried to reverse field again, you know. Uh, that's something. But on these fake punts, we've seen two flags happen, and that cost, that costs them um, plays, you know. You can't have those type of penalties when you run uh, these type of plays. You have to tell your team to block, you know. Um, you, if you block it correctly, you wouldn't have to worry about the flags, but we've seen that there's been two so far. Yeah. So, yeah. so, yeah, my fault. But right there, again, lack of discipline for Warwick uh, as they've had the most penalties out of the two teams. And one of the penalties resulted in a amazing touchdown by Terrius Brown being wiped off. And that also could have been changed for because it really could have been 18 to 6 right now. But now, it, Phoebus is still down by one score and they still have a chance in this game. Yes, as Mateo Radcliffe is in the shotgun here, uh, he takes the snap, drops back, throw it, throws it deep, and oh, that would have been an amazing catch if uh, number five, Jaden Javier, would have held on to it and got his feet in bounds. Yeah, yeah, nice coverage though right there by Christopher Harrison, number nine on Ward, able to read the play call and what the receiver was going to do as he just ran straight. They ran the same play they ran uh, in the first quarter where the quarterback just threw it up and threw a good ball to him. But the second time, great coverage right there by number nine. Yes, that was excellent coverage by number nine uh, being Christopher Harrison, you know. And also, that was a that was a throw that, um, like you said, uh, they they threw it, they threw that play earlier and tried to get the and got the ball to Zia Shaw Ogburn. You know, as Rashawn Austin Parrot is tackled by number five, number two, excuse me, Omari Meredith, and this Phoebus, this Phoebus, uh, this Phoebus running game has been stopped as a short, as a lately, as there is going to be an injury timeout. It's look like number eighty nine Aaron Howard is hurt, but yes, it's this Warrior defense has been able to shut down this Phoebus offense. Yeah, the Phoebus offense has been very stagnant as their only score has came off a of pick six. So they need to find some sort of juice. And they keep trying to switch up the formula. They keep trying to go away from the running game as the running game was working before. But now they keep going as the pass game. And the pass game has been, has been inconsistent for them. Yes, the pass has been inconsistent. You know, they've been um, running the ball as as uh as much as they can as we see number 89 he's he's running off he's jogging off that's good to see you know you don't want to see players hurt uh you don't want you don't want to see players have these bad injuries and i'm glad to see number 89 being able to uh run on the sideline as the Phoebus offense is back uh on Back on the field, number 12, Mateo Radcliffe, Mateo Radcliffe in the shotgun. It looks like they may uh, – oh, there's a timeout here. Looks like they may go all, They may go for a pass play here. Yeah, that's pretty much what they've been doing this second half. They've been trying to catch them all guard with these pass plays, especially the first play of this drive. They tried to throw it deep. That went incomplete. But if I'm Phoebus, it's still a one-possession game. You could still – have, you know, the momentum to run the football, catch them off guard, probably go back to what she was doing before, um, being under center and pulling the guards left or right, giving them the option to, giving the option for the running back to go up the B gap, A gap, or if the outside available, possibly the C gap. Yes, you know, um, I, I I think personally, I think that this uh, Phoebus Phantoms offense are going to try, it's going to try to pass the ball here, uh, on this third down, you know, try to pass the ball. Maybe I expect it may be a, a stop at the like you know we uh we I we see receivers at practice. You know those stops you want to those stop those like eleven yard twelve yard stops. Try to get the try to get your stop to about behind the uh like right in front of the what's the name? Oh, he looking deep though. Oh, look deep. Oh, it may. There's, there's no flag for pass interference. That's great defense by number six, Kamari Humphrey. 
Yeah, right there. Quarterback saw bigger things. He could have had a stop route right there, as you said, yep. <clears throat> past the sticks as the corner was playing deep. But quarterback saw bigger things, and he tried to throw it up the field. But great coverage right there by number six for Ward. Yeah, it's great covers by Kamaria Humphrey, you know. Like I said, I said I would, yes, those stops, you know, without the stop, you're going to throw the stop, try to get the first down. But uh, number 12, Mateo Radcliffe just stepped in the po stepped up in that pocket and tried to deliver that ball uh, in that tight window. You know, uh, looks like Jaden Javier, number five, was looking for a pass interference, but just couldn't get it. That's excellent defense by number six, Kamari Humphrey. Yeah, great coverage right there again. And if I'm Phoebus, what do you think should be the play call right here, uh, Bishop? I think this may be another pass to Kamari, uh, to Jaden. Uh, yeah, oh, to Jaden Javier, another pass, and oh. As they were, they were hand fighting, but great defense by number 19 Isaiah Emery. Like I said, I expected the uh, the deep shot to Javon Javier, but you just gotta get it to him, you know. It looked that ball was a little bit too in front. I think he would have uh, eased off on too much uh, pressure there on that football to throw the ball. You know, he would have got he would have at least got it there, and it would have been uh, either a heck of an interception or a heck of a catch, or just a uh, great defense as it was right there as we saw uh, number 19 Isaiah Emery break up that pass. Yeah, Phoebus uh, offense is starting to get a little bit more predictable now for Warwick as they love throwing the ball deep to uh, Jaden Javier, and they haven't been airing it out to no other receiver on their team. So I feel like if they had a play call set up just like that, just for another person as the safeties and corners was looking for, you know, the you know, the, uh, the ball towards him, that would be nice. Mm. But now that gives Warwick a chance past midfield to score him as they have the ball right now. <clears throat> yes, as they had the ball, uh, try to run a reverse handoff to number seven, Zaire White, and he's stopped by two Phoebe Phantoms there as number 35, Isaiah Blackwell, was there, and number 10, Julian Javier, was also going to make the tackle. Yeah, they try to hit him with that end around. Uh, what fake? I want to not end around fake, but just end around from the wing to see if they can get to the outside. And Phoebus was able to get there before they were able to get additional yards. Nice play right there by the Phoebus defense. Yes, as we uh, as the third quarter is finished, we are getting ready for the start of the fourth quarter. It's 12 to 6. Uh, Warwick is up by a touchdown. Um, and these Phoebus, these Phoebus Phantoms need a stop here and they need to score. They need they need to stop. This Phoebus defense needs to stop Warwick. But if Warwick wants to close out this game, I'll say you have to score here and then uh, your defense has been playing well all game. So you have to uh, get that stop to end up icing this game for Warwick and for Phoebus. You have to play great defense and score the ball to get have a chance to win this game. Yeah, Phoebus right here needs a big stop by the defense as the defense gave them the only points of the game so far. And the offense needs to find something. The pass game isn't working uh, solely because it's starting to get predictable as the run game has been stagnant and they've been going away from it. And the pass game has definitely been predictable as they've been just throwing it to Jaden Javier, number five. And the safeties and corners are knowing that, so they're just keying in on him. So <clears throat> as Warwick is now almost yes. getting close to the 20 yard line and it's second out of eight. Yes, as Warwick uh, he's getting prepared to, for their first snap of the fourth quarter. Uh, number three, Dahari Moore is at quarterback right here. And number eight, uh, Terry's Brown is in the back. Uh, they hand the ball out to Terry's Brown, and he fights for a couple of yards. As number 28, Colin Haynes, as you said, to start off the third quarter, uh, he's going to be that impact player for the Phoebe's defense. Is there for the big tackle. Yeah, he was a little bit quiet third quarter. Uh... But he was, now he's making his name back up again, making plays and trying to do his best to put Phoebus in the best position to win this game as it's now third down and eight. So if I'm Warwick right here, what do you think should be the play call for them as, you know, they're up by six and you still have a chance? Uh, if I'm Warwick, if I'm Warwick, what you do here is, you know, keep running. You could keep running the ball. 
But uh, don't be afraid to throw uh, the ball here. You know, I expect to see Tyler Burley before this uh, this drive is over throwing the football. As number <clears throat> number three, excuse me, number three, Dahari Moore is in the uh, back. Oh, they run a fake handoff quarterback stretch. And number 52, uh, Xavier Ball Trip just hawks him down. Yeah. For the tackle, but it looks like it may be a horse collar call. Yeah, that was excellent athleticism right there by number 52, able to catch up to the quarterback and able to wrap him down. <clears throat> but the way he tackled him was the wrong way, as it's probably going to be called for a horse collar. And, you know, coaches teach you to not tackle like that, but, you know, you got to stay away from that type of tackle. Yes, that was an amazing play by uh, Xavier and Ball Trip, but uh, you just you just can't tackle like that. You can't um, can't grab him in the back of his can't grab the player in the back of his neck and pull him down. So that's gonna call, that's gonna cost your team yards and going to and you're giving the um, the work off this work offense uh, a 15 yard uh, penalty and you're giving them a 15 yard. Um, Head start to the touchdown, you know. Yeah, that gives them, uh, that puts them in the red zone now. So it's getting close to the first down and goal. And Warwick right now has a chance to threaten 18 to 6 lead. Yes, you know, you, you get, you're giving this Warwick team, uh, to the 15 yard line. And we have to see what they, what, what, are, what are they capable of here as they get the ball to Omari. Uh, Meredith and he pushes for a gain of five and he it looks like they, they're they're look like they're going to pound the ball and try to get a touchdown yeah he was able to run through the a gap i don't want to say the a gap probably the b gap and nice way to follow the blockers and get a decent couple ga uh gainings of yards and push them Closer to that end zone right there. Yes, you know, um, they're just trying to run the ball here as number 11, uh, Gamir Thornton is in the game now. A lot of they're going to run the ball with the quarterback. Yep. Yep. And you called it QB, QB stretch. And there's a flag on the field as Gamir Thornton scores. But there's a flag on the play. They may call it for holding. I did see uh, number 54 hold the uh, D in there, and they looks like they're going to call it on him. Yeah, they tried to uh, do a quarterback power to the outside, and it worked to perfection. It's just a holding call and Warwick's lack of discipline. And it's not just this quarter. It's been the past other two quarters. Now that's the second touchdown that's been erased off from a penalty. Yes, that touchdown has been a race. So now you're back at the 20 yard line. You know, your team was at the 10, but that play has moved your team back, excuse me, to the 19 yard line. So now you have to see what can you do here. You know, they still have number 11, Gamir Thornton, on the field. So I wouldn't be surprised if he run a, a, a read option or maybe a pitch uh, between him and Amari Meredith. Yeah, he's been the option quarterback, running quarterback for them. Uh... And it looks like, I want to say, they swapped him. Oh, never mind. Still quarterback. So I feel like it's going to be a quarterback run play, and as it is. But Phoebus is rallying to him and wraps him down. Yes, as number 87 uh, with the tackle there, he makes a he makes a great tackle to push push the uh, Ward Raiders back a little bit more to about the 23-yard line. So this Phoebus Phantoms defense is holding up. But it's all about can they get this stop here? You know they they need this stop on uh they need to stop this work offense from getting anything. Hopefully not a first down. They need to stop them getting a first down and uh get their offense back on the field. Yeah, it's seven minutes to go. If I'm Phoebus, you have to have a stop right here as you're down by six and they're at kind of outside of field goal position as Warwick kind of needs a touchdown if they want to have the chance to score the ball. But it's third down to 18, and chances are looking very slim. Yes, as we see, Dahari Moore is waiting for the snap. Uh, he pitches the ball to number eight, Terrius Brown. He cuts up field, and it's tackled by number 19, Kendall Whitehead. And now we have to see what is this Ward offense is going to do? What is this Ward team going to do? Are they going to kick for the field goal, or are they going to go for it? Well, I don't think they trust the 
uh, they field goal team as much due to the blocking and how it failed when they first scored their touchdown and the extra point. So I feel like they're going to probably go for it as it's kind of a win-win situation if for Warwick because they don't get this. It puts Phoebus behind the 20 and, like, directly on the 15 and puts them in very good field position for Warwick. Yes, as you see, Tyler Burley is here off the radio to take snap. I wouldn't be surprised if they throw it was to Zaire White here uh, as – Tyler Burry escapes the pocket and it slides, but that's that is not what you need there if you want to put another uh, touchdown on the board. If you're the Ward Raiders, yeah, he could have pushed the ball to the end zone right there, but he decided that he didn't see nobody and tried to go up the gap. And there was four Phoebus players waiting for him up that middle. So great way to rally and give the offense a chance for Phoebus as it's five minutes and fifty-seven to go. Yes, I thought I thought they would they would give the ball to uh, Zaire White there. I thought it would be a little mm -hmm. fade ball to Zaire White, but I was wrong. And he tried to scramble, uh, but was ultimately stopped. So now, if you're the Phoebus offense, you get the ball with five minutes and fifty seven seconds left on the clock. You have to think this as this may be your last drive to try to push the ball into the end zone. You know, you have you have one. If you're the, you're the Phoebus Phantoms, have one timeout. So if you if you end up turning the ball over here, you, the game may be done. So the Phoebus Phantoms uh, offense look is going on back on the field as the as the Ward Raiders defense is going back on the field, and we have to see what this first play uh, for this Phoebus offense is going to tell for the, this drive right here. Yeah, I feel like they're probably gonna sling the ball a lot, especially due to circumstances and. Also, how fast the JV game goes. Like, a JV game goes by supremely fast. So, I feel like they're going to sling that ball a lot. And we're going to see if the pass protection can hold up yes. for the quarterback. As looks as Mateo Radcliffe is in the shotgun. And they and they use their final timeout. Oh, um, so, now the Phoebus Phantoms have zero timeouts. So, now you have to see. And now you have to use the sideline as your frame. Uh, here on his drive to uh, save the clock. Yeah, right there. It must have been a miscommunication on what the play was between the coach and the players, causing the quarterback to uh, force a timeout. And now time management has to be a key factor now, especially you're down, and you have to use the sidelines as much as possible to stop the clock. Or you can also just run, you know, if you're going to threaten – to the red zone, you can also use it as your best friend as you can stay in bounds, stay out of bounds, and possibly give Warwick less time when he had the ball. Yes, you know, like I said, uh, the Phoenix Phantoms have to think this drive right here is their last drive for offense. You know, you have zero timeouts now, so you had all week to stop the clock is uh, incompletions and uh, going out of bounds. But this Phoenix Phantoms offense has been getting shut down by this Warrior defense so far this game. So we have to see uh, can this Phoebus offense break through and push the ball down the field. As Mattel Radcliffe is uh, waiting for the snap and the shotgun. Oh, it looks like they run a, a jet sweep to Jaden Javier, but he's going back and he's tackled by number 11, Gamir Thornton. Yeah, great way to have outside contain right there, able to run through that alley and push them back five yards. So that puts them at the five-yard line, and that threatens a lot for Phoebus. Yes, it does threaten a lot for Phoebus. Um, as we see, Jaden Javier, he went back a little bit further on that jet sweep call. That's something you don't need for the if you're the Phoebus Phantoms. You have to try to push the ball up the field. You know, and like, that's great defense. Like I said, great outside contain by the Warwick Raiders, uh, keeping keeping him from breaking loose and getting that tackle. As you see, Mateo Radcliffe is waiting for the snap and the shotgun. A two running back set. As he drops back, looks, sets up in the pocket, throws it, and oh, he couldn't get the ball. They, oh, is there's a flag on the field maybe for pass interference. Try to get the ball to number 88, Tyler Allen, but looks like he was stopped by Zaire White and wasn't able to get the ball. Uh, as there's a pass, in on, on, pass interference on the Ward Raiders. Yeah, and that's huge for Fevers right there as he tried to fit it. He tried to throw it in the area of full of Warwick Raiders 
as there was only one Phoebus uh, receiver in the whole area. But that pass interference there, very clutch for Phoebus, and that pushed them. I want to see an automatic first down. That's probably an automatic first down right there. Has to be. As that pass interference call will give the Phoebus Phantoms a first down. So now we have to see what is the Phoebus Phantoms going to do here uh, on, on this new set of downs. You know, as you're in a shotgun again in that two running back set. So we have to see what will this Phoebus Phantoms team call what will this Phoebus Phantoms team call as Mateo Radcliffe is in a shotgun. He gets the snap, looks, drops back. He has his eyes set. On Jaden Javier, but throws an interception to number 19, Isaiah Emery, as Emery looks to take the ball into the end zone, and that could be the game. Yeah, that has to be the game right there. If they can manage the clock well enough. But first of all, what was the quarterback thinking on that throw? I mean, you try to chuck it up and try to see if his receiver can make a play for it. The receiver didn't even have a chance. He threw it away past him. It was again three Warwick Raiders in the area. As they've been reading that play for the longest, they've been running that play for the whole third quarter. And Warwick that time was able to capitalize on a nice interception right there by number 19, Isaiah Emery. And that puts Warwick in very good field position as Phoebus has no timeouts. Yes, Phoebus has no timeouts. And I wouldn't be surprised if this Warwick Raiders offense is trying to score another touchdown. But yes, this uh that's he uh Mateo Radcliffe made Zero to no reads there. He only locked his eyes on number five, Jaden Javier, and that ball was picked off by Isaiah Emery. As number three, Dahari Moore is in the shotgun here. Uh, running the ball to Terrius Brown, and he looks to cut up, but is tackled by first contact was by number 19, uh, Kendall Whitehead, and is brought down by the Phoebus Phantoms. Yeah, so Phoebus has to have a quick three and out right here if you want to save time and still have a chance to win this game, especially with no timeout. And for Warwick, really all you need is a uh, first down and possibly another one, and that could probably end the game right there. Yes, yeah, so, you know, if you're the Phoebus fan, you're hoping for a turnover here. You know, you want to try to – if I'm a Phoebus fan, you want to try to rip the ball out. Yeah. Try to punch the ball out, get a fumble, uh, hopefully. But like you say, you know, if, if I'm the Roy Raiders and you're playing just for the game, to win, in the game here, you know, maybe a first down, try to wait, waste the time down, then get you a first down uh, with, in the game. But you can, but you only get one first down uh, on here in, in the red zone. They get the ball to um, Amari Meredith as he pushes forward and he may score. No, he's shut down at the four yard line, but that's a great push by this uh, work offense. Yeah, right there, that was a clutch push right there. Glut great fight right there by number two, Amari, uh, Amari Meredith. And nice way to push all the way to the four yard line and possibly seal this game away for Warwick and possibly get them revenge on Phoebus. Yes, you know, this uh, Ward JV looks to close out the Phoebus Phantoms here. I wouldn't be surprised if they run the ball again, you know. Um, and they may run the ball with Amari Meredith again, try to get him a touchdown, as they, as they will. And Amari Meredith pushes through for a feet of a Ward touchdown, excuse me. Huh. And the, this game is now over. Um, well, well, and I don't know. I don't know. I I shouldn't have said that because yeah. maybe something could happen. Maybe you see a kick return. It's football, anything possible. But I see you may see a kick return, and and you may see a um an onside kick recovery, uh, some sort. So this game is not over yet. So I wouldn't. I shouldn't have said that. This game uh still could uh Phoebus, Phoebus could still put up a uh, a miracle here. Yeah, right there. Right there. Again, they uh, had to reward a running back after what he did the previous play with a nice fight and nice way to push it past the, the four. And then a nice way to put his head down and get the touchdown that possibly might have sealed the game for Warwick and win this game for them. But still two minutes and 29 seconds to go. Phoebus will get the ball back. So possibly they can make, if any of the playmakers can step up and possibly get a quick touchdown right here and then probably an onside kick. And that would be huge. Yes, you know, if I'm the Phoebus Phantoms, I want the ball in number two, in number two, Rayshard, Austin Parrot hands. And I also want the ball in number five, 
Jaden, Javier, and so they, they, those two have been the two big playmakers for this um, FIBA's team. So uh, giving them the ball is your number one priority. But we have to see what can this FIBA's team do. You know, you're hoping for maybe a quick. You're hoping for a quick touchdown. That's what you want. But this um, this war defense has been able to shut down this FIBA's fandom offense. So we have to see what this FIBA's team can do with two minutes and 29 seconds left. Uh, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, if I'm Phoebus, you cannot run that all goes route play again. Like, we had to, we had to switch it up because Warwick has been expecting that. And you, your quarterback just threw a pick off that. So you have to switch it up, probably some post attack in the middle of the field or manipulate the safeties away from your, your uh, wide receivers. As number two, Rayshon Austin Parade feels it. He looks to cut a field and he oh. breaks free. He's he got to be going. Gone. For a touchdown for the Phoenix Phantoms. And then we just said this game is not over yes. yet. Anything can happen. It's football. And that right there proved it right there. Rashawn, uh, Austin, Parat, he's been, he was quiet for the third quarter. They stopped running the football. But he was able to find a way to impact the game outside the offensive side of the ball. Yes, like I said, like I said, I apologize for saying this game was over once Amari married a score. Because like you said, it's football. Anything can happen. And that just happened. Yeah. So this now the Phoebus Phantoms are looking for to recover an onside kick. You know, uh if you recover the onside kick, you give your team another shot at tying this game. And so I think they're going for two here to try to make it 14-18 to where maybe they get the onside kick and they score again. It, this game wouldn't go in overtime. Yeah, so obviously they have to go for two right here. And if they get this two-point conversion, if they score another touchdown, that's going to put them in the lead by a decent margin. So let's see if they get this. Yes, as he gave the ball to Isaiah Blackwell. And he... The big guy cannot push his way into the end zone as he was stopped by a bunch of Warren Raiders uh, on that play. So now it's 12 to 18. If you're the Phoebus Phantoms, you need to have this onside kick here. You need to get the onside kick and you need to get the ball and score. Yeah, right here, Warriors undefeated season is on the line too. The yes. JV undefeated season is the last game of the season for Warwick. So they have to put it all on this uh his hands team and catching this football off the onside kick and for phoebus if you do get this onside recovery then you have to look for the our offense to have to make a play in some way and get their playmakers the ball to get this touchdown yes the phoebus phoebus uh undefeated uh gv team is also on the line as well you know um if if Warwick Hands team recovers this ball here, the game is over. Cause Warwick will run out run out the clock. All they need is one first down, and the game will be over. But if you're the Phoebus Phantoms, you want to feel the ball, and you want to uh, have another shot to push your ball, push your team to get your team a touchdown to tie up the game. As we see, Jaden Williams looks to be the guy to try to give his Phoebus Phantoms another shot on offense to tie the game. So the hands team for Ward right now has to be important. They're probably going to look to kick it possibly to, I want to say, their Phoebus right side of the field have to attack uh, the bigger guys. And you have to get this. Uh, hand, you have to get this from hands team. Have to. Yes, as Jaden Williams looks to kick the ball off. This is a big play here. Uh, Jaden kicks it up. Oh, he kicks it out of bounds. And that will end the game for the Phoebus Phantoms. Uh, from Jaden Williams. Have to keep your head up here. Can't blame yourself. Uh, you know, can't keep your head down. Looks like this uh, Phoebus undefeated season will be over after a few snaps and a first down. Yeah, he put a lot of power on that kick to the point where it went all the way past the sidelines, almost to the crowd. That's what it looked like. But he put a lot of power on that, and that possibly, most likely, put a ended their undefeated JV season. Yes, yeah, as this Ward squad is looking just to uh, waste out the clock as much as they can, get a first down, and win the game. You know, one first down, one first down would certainly end the game. 
and another uh, and two first downs would definitely end the game. So as the Harden Moore is here, you know, if you're the Phoebus Phantoms, you can still get the ball back if you punch the ball out. Yeah. So if I'm, I'm the Phoebus defensive coordinator, I'm telling your kids to punch the ball out. As Terrence Brown breaks off, and he is stopped by a number of Phoebus Phantoms. As, as you see, I've seen a lot of um, people try to punch that ball out there, but the good, the good way to hold the ball there for uh, Terrence Brown. Yeah. If, if Phoebus has any chance to get back in this game, you have to punch the football out, and you have to cause a fumble in any way, shape, or form, especially right there. They had a chance to – everybody for Phoebus was rallied to the football. They could have had a chance to punch it out, but nice ball security right there by the running back, uh, number eight, uh, Torres Brown. Torres Brown. Yes. Uh, looks like the War Graders may be trying to run the ball again here. You know, uh, if it's Phoebus can – uh, get the ball back on offense. They will have a, just a few seconds on the clock. And uh, oh, it looks like they're trying to punch the ball out. And there's a, a third down uh, for the Ward Raiders. He's tackled for loss again by number number 19, Kendall Whitehead. So now the time is running out. If you're the, if you're the Phoebus Phantoms. And you get your team back on offense. You get the ball with about at least 30 seconds left on the clock. So if Phoebus can shut them down on this play again and be able to get their team the ball back about 30, 20 seconds, we're looking for maybe a Hail Mary. Yeah, you have to at this point in the game. Or it could be a fumble right here. So let's see. Yes. As Terrius Brown is he try – oh, you have to rip the ball out there for the uh, – Phoebus fan, or she had to rip the ball out, but it looks like this game will be maybe over. Is there a call? Is there a call here? Is there a flag? Oh, there's an injury timeout that stops the clock. Uh, if you're the uh, Phoebus Phantoms, the injury timeout stops the clock. 17 seconds left. If you're the Phoebus Phantoms, you have to get the ball at least in a great, in a good spot here and maybe throw a Hail Mary mm -hmm. and see what this game, um, see how this game ends. Now, you know how, you know how, you know, coincidental that is, right? How there's, a, there's an injury on fourth, on fourth down. Come on now, an injury on fourth down, no timeouts. Some like they had they had a scheme that, and it looks like the refs are calling it back, saying that it was a fake injury. Oh, as this game will end, the Ward Raiders will stay undefeated as they beat this uh beat the JV Phantoms, uh and that this caps off a great season for the Ward Raiders. Yeah, it has to a great call by the refs realizing that it was a fake injury, and. They tried to do the little, they tried to uh, pull what I think Oregon or some college team did. They tried to fake the injury and try to get a timeout for another chance. Great call by the refs and a great way to cap off this season for Warrior JV team as they're able to get revenge for their varsity boys. Yes, this, yes, this War Raiders team wins the game 18 to 12. And this and the War Raiders are 10-0 uh, to finish off their JV season. Um, as we will see the JV Phantoms go against the JV Patriots uh, next week. Uh, and so this game, like I said, finalized War season. This was a great game to uh, commentate on. Great game to call. Uh, we've seen a lot of big plays. We've seen number eight Terrence uh, Brown take a take an 85 yard run to the touchdown. Yep. We've seen a pick six. Uh, we've seen a kick return. And we've seen we've seen a lot. And this is just great. I'm glad I was able to call the game with you, EJ. Yeah, glad to call the game with you too, man. So, you know what I'm saying. I'm Edric Jones. Uh, I'm Bishop Dunn. And we'll see y'all next time on NPS Telecom's YouTube. You know, catch us out there.